What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going for the first run in a Treyu's The Artist. Now you may have heard about this shoe. In fact you probably have. If you watch YouTube, if you like seeing new shoes that come out, you've probably seen this shoe, I don't know, six months ago? A bunch of the bigger shoe tubers did receive a early version of this shoe when the rest of us, you and I, had to pre-order them and wait six months for delivery. Well, my friends, those six months are up and here we are. A Treyu's incredibly affordable, extremely light, carbon plated racing shoe. Now, I'm not going for a race today, but I'm gonna be turning over my legs a little quicker than normal to see how these shoes feel. When we get back, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the Treyu's The Artist. Come on. All right, first run in the Atreyu The Artist is done and I'm a little disappointed because they are not the beautiful crisp white that they were when I left the house. I'm seeing a little road dirt around the outsole. That gorgeous base of the shoe has got some road dirt. I really have to get over it. I'm not someone that babies shoes, but a nice pair of white shoes really looks good when they're new. Today's run 8.3 miles, which is about 13.36 kilometers. The average pace was 7.20 a mile, which is about 4.33 a kilometer. But I did six one kilometer repeats up to about threshold pace. In between those repeats, I slowed down. So the artist got a good workout. I did a couple miles to warm up, so I was running nice and easy. Then I got to pick up the pace and then I kind of backed it off to zone three, just trying to bring my heart rate down. And overall, they performed extremely well. You know, I don't think I've told you the stats of this shoe, so let's briefly do that. The artist weighs in at 7.8 ounces for a men's size nine, but in my size, men's size 13, it always weighs more than the published stats. My size weighs in at 9.6 ounces or 271 grams. Still, for me, a very, very light shoe. It has a six millimeter drop with 24 four in the forefoot, 30 in the heel. But when you include that five millimeter liner, you add five millimeters to that. So we then have 29 in the forefoot, 35 in the heel. It's a pretty big stack height. And I did feel that stack height, but we're gonna get to that in just a second. The artist uses a super critical EVA foam midsole. And what they do, they take some EVA and they make it super critical. Super, super critical. It gives you that nice pop that you want from a midsole. The shoe is very rigid. Like I'm trying to bend it right now and it's very hard to bend which is exactly what you want with a carbon plated shoe. You would think with the stiffness, it would be a pretty firm ride and you'd be wrong. It is a very soft ride and you want it to feel even softer, heel strike in this bad boy. This shoe really comes alive when you get up on your forefoot, when you start picking up those paces. But if you inadvertently heel strike in this shoe, it's gonna feel like you're running on a marshmallow. I mean, a somewhat responsive marshmallow. I had a very similar feeling when I ran in the next percent. Now, I'm not comparing these to the next percent. After all, this is a hundred dollar shoe. The next percent two retail for two 25 and I haven't even got my hands on a pair of those yet. So we're talking less than half the price. The squishiness of the foam is where it ends. It is not nearly as responsive as the next percent. So please don't think you're gonna spend $100 and get the same performance out of this shoe. But that doesn't take anything away from the shoe. It is still a carbon plated racer and you get that performance that comes with a carbon plated racer. It was a real treat to run in. And as I said, it really comes alive when you start picking up the pace. Now you're thinking $100, man, that seems too good to be true. Well, it almost is. But Atreyu has, They've able to cut costs in certain areas. One of the areas is by using the same upper as the base model. I happen to have a base model right here. And yep, just as I said, the uppers are extremely similar, almost identical. And that's a good thing. The upper does what it's supposed to do. It holds your foot in place. I had a good midfoot lockdown. I had plenty of room in the toe box, but there is one difference. One difference that I've noticed from the base model to these, and that's the heel. You can see here the, the heel counter is very loosey-goosey. The heel collar has a thin area of padding right around the outside. Totally comfortable, didn't notice it, which is exactly what you want from a hill collar. So I did those six one kilometer repeats where I was really picking up the pace. I was putting in a bit of an effort, but I wasn't just legging it on a straight course. When it was straight, didn't notice anything with the shoes. The shoes performed outstandingly. But when I got to turns, when I had to go from the road to the path and I was kind of zigging and zagging a little bit, I noticed a little bit of heel slip. Not heel slip up and down. It locked in my heel pretty good, but it felt like I was moving laterally. To take it to an extreme, it almost felt like 
my foot was gonna roll off of the midsole. Now it didn't. I was in no danger of slipping out of the shoe. I was held in place well, but that's the feeling that it kind of gave me. I'm not gonna retire these shoes after one run. I'm gonna use these until they die. That heel slip that I experienced, it isn't something that would put me off running a race in them because it was only when I was turning sharp corners and generally in a race, maybe if you're doing an out and back, the area where you turn around, you might get a little bit of heel slip. You might notice that, but mostly when you're racing, you're gonna be running in a straight line, kind of maybe around corners, but nothing sharp like I was doing. You watching this, you're probably not gonna notice the heel slip if you're using this as your ratio. Let's just go to the asshole. See that nice, slick blue rubber? It's one millimeter of rubber. Not a lot, but it does the job. You remember in the base model, they don't have any outsole rubber. You're running right on the midsole. So this one millimeter of rubber on the outside is nice and slick. It's really gonna help extend the life of these shoes. Also, slick rubber. You might think that traction wouldn't be good. And again, you'd be wrong. I found the traction in these shoes to be outstanding. And I did run on some wet roads. So overall, the morning was dry when I went out for this run, but there were some areas where the sprinklers were on the road. And of course, when I was running on those wet roads, I was kind of, kind of testing it, kind of scuffing my feet a little to see if they'd slip. And they didn't at all. The rubber worked well. As far as appearance goes, I really like the way these look. I mean, this is a show shoe. White, it's crisp. It's simple and the performance is really spot on. I think Atreyu has done a fantastic job with the price point of this shoe because they're opening up a super shoe to the masses. At $100, it's very affordable. A lot more so than those $200 shoes that it's competing against. Now, as I've said, the energy return is not the same. The pop is not the same. But there is no doubt when you're running in the shoe that it is a racing shoe and it makes you feel fast. Friends, you know the drill. If you like running shoes, give this video a thumbs up. I want you to write in the comments if you have run in any Atreyu shoes, if you've ordered the artist, and if you've taken it out for a spin, what do you think? Write in the comments so the rest of the community can know not just my opinion on this shoe. And of course, this was just my initial review. Stay tuned because I will be using this a lot more and I'll fill you in when I get a few more miles on it. All right guys, new videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.